Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Higley. I am an NCCE learning um, specialist here with NCCE. And today's special guests are Steve Garten. He is a senior manager for Common Sense Privacy. He is an expert in meaningful technology integration, particularly in large scale initiatives. We also have Sue Thoughts, who is the senior program manager for Common Sense Education since 2011. She's been working with districts to implement systems of digital citizenship and positive digital culture. So I'm going to let them take it away. And today uh, they're going to be talking a little bit about um, common sense and what common sense education can do for you in the classroom. Thank you so much, um, both to you, Michael, and to Bobby. Um, so glad to be here. I am so happy that Common Sense works so closely with NCCE and is able to share all of our resources with, uh, with this great crew. Um, I was asked here today to speak about uh, this idea of, of privacy and what we're doing in this time of distance learning to really address privacy. And so I didn't necessarily want to do this myself, right? Um, and I wanted my friend Steve to join me because he is the person that I turn to when it comes to um, a lot of the questions that my districts and the educators that I work with, they have issues about privacy and, and trying to turn this legalese into something that's practical and useful in the classroom. And so what does all of this mean for us in the classroom and how do we turn policy into something that we can actually use with our students. And so I have invited Steve to join me. And the way we're going to do this today is I have a lot of questions. And when it comes to what does this look like in, in times of um, in distance learning and how do we enact you know, some of these policies and, and make them applicable to our situations with all these tools. And so Steve, can you tell us a little bit more about um, your background before you became Mr. Privacy? Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about how, how you ended up in the privacy role and what you do. Absolutely, Sue, and it's great to be here. And for those of you that don't know Sue, she's amazing. So make sure that you look her up, find all her stuff, follow her, everything that goes with this. Um, I started as a classroom teacher. I taught math, and, and I think that the, the privacy thing here will, will become very important as I found out teaching is really hard. And now that we've changed the medium, it's something different. I know I started out as a teacher and my first year teaching, I had seventh grade general math. And the end of the year, my desk was cleared out. There was no way I was coming back for a year or two because this is just ridiculously hard. And I don't want to do this. And that's why they have summers. So teachers will come back. Student mortality rate will be a little lower. And, um, you know, we have that kind of thing. And I realized that I, I had no fun at all, you know, so the next year was better, and then by the time we got it figured out, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about this as we're going on, but taught for eight years, and then I made the mistake of, you know, I was able to actually send things to the printer, so I became the tech coordinator for the district. Then I went on to do technology director at the county level, and then before I went to Common Sense, I was a technology coordinator for the state of Maine. And I don't know if you know the state of Maine, they're going in their 20th year of one-to-one -one statewide. So... A lot of implementation and running a big program like that, that's really where I started getting into the privacy piece, the digital citizenship piece, and all the other things that go with it. Common Sense partnered with Maine about nine or 10 years ago on the digital citizenship materials because we had that huge footprint of students to do that. So love working with Common Sense when they said, you want to come on board? Absolutely. So been dealing with the digital citizenship and the privacy piece for quite a while, um, part of the outreach team, for, and, and now the privacy is is really a big deal right now as things are picking up. So I'm anxious to, to hear what your questions are, what everybody has to say that's going on out there now. Um, the main thing I want to preface this with is that there are a lot of concerns now, privacy, all these other pieces that are happening out there. But at the same time, I want to reiterate that it's a very hopeful time. I mean, it's still teacher-student interaction. It's still us keeping our classrooms going. It's still doing the best thing we have for the kids. So don't get freaked out about the privacy things. Pay attention to it, absolutely. But don't get freaked out a bit about it. Do what you can. Call upon people for resources when you need it, and, and we'll just be fine. So great to be here, Sue. Let's start this off. All right. So um, I just also want to say that uh, Michael has volunteered to moderate this chat over here. 
And Steve and I have already kind of prepared some resources that we're going to be sharing today. And so the links to some of those resources will also appear in the chat. But if you somehow miss that link because that chat is just flying by you or something, or you don't have the, the ability to click on that link, we're going to share all the links at the end too. So don't feel like you got to scramble. We're going to, everything that we're sharing today, we'll, we'll get it out to you and we got you covered. So, but if you have any questions for Steve, you know, feel free to throw them in there or for myself. Um, so I, I guess my first thought here is that we are using all these tools in this time of distance learning. And um, for example, you know, I know that a lot of districts are using, they started to use Zoom, right? And then there was this whole debacle and everybody freaked out about the Zoom and the bombing and the porn and like all kinds of terrible things were happening. What? what are we doing right are we being paranoid or should we never use this again what's going on how should we handle this yeah and and thanks Stu. and that's a great way of looking at it because remember all these meeting tools the the microsoft meet we're on now the the or the microsoft teams the google meet the zoom all these things all of these were designed for business so when education picked up and started taking these all of a sudden now we had large amounts of kids in here and then the scrutiny started happening right away um, so, so as we're moving forward, remember that this is not distance learning as such. This is not remote learning. This is emergency remote learning. This happened so quickly without being able to be prepared. Even districts that had a distance learning platform and remote, remote learning set up really weren't ready for this scale or the, or the things that happened. So as a result, Zoom got the, the microscope put on them for things that were happening that were there. And Zoom had some issues. They did. They had some privacy issues. They have updated their privacy policies four or five times in the last couple of months. They have changed a lot of things on the application space out there. There were things they didn't even think about that they needed to be concerned with as they were doing it, because now we're talking about kids and things that are going on. Um, but from my perspective, I think Zoom did a really good job, and all the other ones are doing too. You know, Microsoft, Google, all the other platforms are, are doing the best they can to catch up, they're doing the best to make sure the privacy is there. You realize with kids on there, that's a whole different issue as it's going there. But what really happened was we just got thrown out there right away. All of a sudden, you're doing things remotely that you hadn't been doing, and, and there were just things that you hadn't thought about. So for me, when you're looking at using these tools, this is really an extension of your classroom. And the first thing you do when you go to your classroom is you figure out what, you, what your classroom is. If you have things in the cabinets, you'll go through the cabinets, you'll look at all that stuff. But we started the Zoom thing. We started all the remote meetings by just jumping in. I, I think teachers didn't even know what the features were in Zoom. They didn't, they didn't do that. So what I'd recommend for people to do is treat this as your classroom. Click on every button to see what's there, you know, to find out what's there. Most of the Zoom problems that happened weren't technical, technical problems. It was, it was really management problems and things like this, you know, the Zoom bombing with people coming in. It was because teachers didn't realize, oh wait, for my classroom, I stand by the door, and if somebody comes in that I don't know who they are, we have a conversation about what's going on. And in Zoom, we weren't doing that. We just we just threw the door open wide, said everybody come on in. So realize that the tools are there. That's why you implement the waiting room so that you can know who's there. That's why you have the group things that are there. And I think the other thing that the distance learning is really gonna actually help us with is that when you're in your classroom and you're talking to your kids, you can sort of see the kids getting bored, drifting off and doing like this. So you have to do what you have to do to pull them back. But when it's remote, <laughs> it, it is so much harder because now you know, and when you think of yourself in a Zoom meeting or a, a, a Teams meeting or whatever meeting you're in, and it's getting a little boring, you're checking your mail, you're on Twitter, your Instagram, you're shopping, you know, doing this kind of things. Realize that your kids are doing that too. So what it does as a teacher then is it says, all right, how can I use these tools then in a way that's more meaningful. Like I have group time in the classroom. Well, there are group spaces in these meeting rooms you can do. Am I talking to these kids too much? Because, because it's not going to work remotely doing this kind of thing. So leverage the advantages of these tools and make sure these kids have time to actually do some meaningful work. So I think in some ways this will help us out. The privacy piece, I, I think that all the people are working on that. As a teacher, you still want to be aware of that. Be aware of who's in your room. Be aware of, you know, what the conversations are. Be aware of your background, like your background, like you're looking at my background now. This tells you a lot about me. You know, like I have Spider-Man's on my wall over here. It was actually a poster that I had when I was in middle school 
And when I was in middle school, I was not cool. Then my daughter's an elementary teacher. So suddenly these comic things became big. So I put these in post in these cheap frames, put them up. And now I am cool because these aren't reprints. There's these originals. But since you can tell, you can see the background there as you're using your background. Part of the privacy piece is what do I want to show? What do I want people to see from me? And then conversely, when I talk to my students, make them aware that, you know, are there things I don't need to see in your house or what's going on here? Who's behind you and that kind of thing. So thinking about the backgrounds that are doing there. But I think the tools, the tools are really good, Sue. I like them. Whatever tool your district is, is using, make sure that you figure out what's going on. Click every single button there. Kids aren't really better at technology than you are. They're just fearless. They'll click on anything. So do that. And when in doubt, ask a kid to help you. Say, hey, help me out as we're trying to figure out this thing. And they, they, will, they will love to help you out. So the big thing now is you've had some time in whatever tool you're using. But think about next year, whatever model we have, whether we're back to school, whether we're blended, whether we're completely remote, whatever we are, we know we're going to be using these tools in some capacity going forward. So think about how can I make this my classroom, just like you decorate your own classroom in, in school. You know, make your make your house, your room look like your classroom and then say, OK, how do I want to manage these kids? Do I have groups that I can put them in as they're talking remotely? Are there times for me to talk, realizing that I don't want to just talk at them as much as I did because the attention span is going to be much more difficult and I don't want these kids to be bored out of my mind. How do I let the kids talk to each other? Think about the privacy settings that you've got on your device so that I can have these kids interact with each other. And remember right now, the most important piece of ending this year is the social interaction. If we can get some academic stuff happening, that's wonderful, but that's not the big deal right now. It's the interaction. The teacher and the student, teachers are going crazy not being able to talk to their kids. The kids are going crazy not being able to talk to the teachers, and, and now's the time when the most important part. And I'm sorry I ramble on. I've, you've got like a million questions, and I went off on one, so sorry about that. No, this is all very important information. And um, what I want to know is like that teacher's essential guide to Zoom or the essential guide to Google Classroom. I know that some of the points that you just made are also in those guides and those were posted by Michael. They're in the chat um, and we'll also include them at the end. But I think a lot of these considerations that that you know that we need to have as teachers who are using these these tools, you know, these should all just, you know, just be mindful of the opportunities, be mindful of the possible pitfalls, right? And, you know, as Jason said, like know your tool. Know your tool before you go in there. And I, I love kids aren't necessarily better at tech, they're just fearless. So <laughs> true. Imagine you are fearless. What are you going to do in that tool? Um, but I, I guess, you know, when it comes to privacy, I, I know you have a daughter who's teaching. You have, you know, a partner who is an administrator, right? Like you have people in your life who are who are active teachers. Um, and so it, what is it that, you know, as they went into this distance learning mode full time, um, what is it that you wanted them to think about? Like what advice did you give them when it came to privacy? and you know what to think about in this time great great question sue and it, yes my, my daughter tiffany and actually we've included a link in there my daughter tiffany actually did an interview uh jeff mao at ed moxie was able to do an interview with her a two-part interview um she's been teaching english to children in china for the last four years so she's now in elementary school in jacksonville florida and when this shut down the first thing she did was she talked to all of her students remotely. She figured out how to connect and, and do that on her own. And of course, the deal is, well, wait a minute, what do I do on the privacy thing? And there are a couple of things that I would, I would say to look at at the start. The first of all, any device you're on has links. Like when you're on this one right now, I'm looking at the top, it says recording has started. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, that means let your kids know if something's being recorded. Let the kids know and realize there are some things that are okay to record, probably for your own use, that's fine, but anything you're putting out, be careful of. And then the privacy policy is actually linked at the top. So you're probably not gonna be able to read privacy policies for everything. I do that all day long, it's a job, how exciting is that? I mean, I know some of you are jealous with that. Um, but doing these privacy policies, there are a couple of key things I think you should look at. The first thing is, am I collecting student information? You know, is there any student information that I'm collecting? Because I'm still responsible for that. Am I sharing any student information, including pictures or student work or anything, you know, things that are happening like this? And then what else is being connected to this? Is there advertising tied in that I'm exposing these kids to, you know, that kind of thing? So if you sort of look at this big overarching piece, 
um, you know, and, and as you're going through each each thing that you're adding, start thinking about, okay, what am I collecting? What am I doing? What am I sharing? And then who am I sharing this with? Because that's the big problem with, with something like Zoom or any other application is, well, who else is watching or who else is doing something like that? So the privacy thing, they're working very hard now on keeping it in. They made sure you can now choose the server that you go into. Having that waiting room where you keep them there means you don't have strangers coming into your classroom without you okaying them, you know, so that you'll you'll know that they're there, even if somebody happened to, to come in. Realizing that the social engineering part, kids are going to share things. If you have a password for your class, you know, realize that kids are going to share it, share it going around something else. So just be aware of that possibility as, as things are going out there. Um, my wife is a, an administrator at an inner city school in, in Cincinnati, really tough district, and they had to go remote like this to get those de those devices out. And and the one the key piece for her is which one of my kids don't have access to this technology? The school gave them all a device, but that still doesn't mean that they're going to be able to connect. So if I can't, how can I connect this with? So the teachers that, that are connecting with their kids on the class, yes, I'm doing it. But if I can't, do I have a number? Can I call them? Can I actually call these kids and talk to the kids? Can I? Do we have packets we can give them if they can't access things? Something? So think about that equity piece, especially as we're ending this year of who's being left behind because those are probably the, the students that are missing you the most in person to do this. Um, if you do have a chance to watch Tiffany's uh, um, little interview thing, it's really interesting to see the mindset that she had as she was going in and what she tried to figure out and the technical problems that were both the same and different, the frustrations of an elementary teacher trying to connect, getting your parents involved because you know if you're talking to younger kids, you really need the parents to be there, making sure that the parents understand, you know, Yes, we are. We are talking to who 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 is your child going to be able to talk to? Who are they interacting with? They want them to talk to the teacher and then making sure that you implement those things in a way that's consistent with your district's policy and guidelines that they have as they're going out there because districts are trying to provide teachers with with good guidelines. But this was an emergency situation. So even though I think everybody tried really hard, there were still a lot of things where teachers are just on your own to try and figure out. And being aware of the private basics, I think, is what is what will make it work as you're going forward. And I, I, mean, I think that's just being very aware of the privacy basics. I think we have all of a sudden a lot of teachers who aren't aware of a lot of the privacy basics and they never had to use a lot of that tech in the classroom before. Now, all of a sudden, we are throwing whole districts of teachers in and there are some, you know, federal policies, there are guidelines that are already out there that they should have been following all along, right? We know that they should have been doing this all along. Um, but when it comes to things like, you know, COPPA and FERPA, you know, how, how are we communicating those, you know, not just, you know, for teachers, because they need to know this anyway, right? They should have, but now how does that, how does that apply in this distance learning setting and especially when you have a lot of teachers who are on social media and kids who are on social media and like you know what what does that look like yeah and and that that's really a really good question sue because it, it's the same world and yet it's completely different um, as you're going out there because like you said teachers have been responsible for student data this whole time um, some have been more more responsible than others as you're doing this but all of a sudden now it's being exposed when you're putting things out there you know where, because if you're assessing students for something, how are you assessing them? Where are you putting this record? You know, if it's in your classroom on a machine or on a device or something, that's one thing. But now you've got things in the cloud. You've got things that are out there that are bouncing around. So my advice is, again, don't panic. Be calm. Realize that we're doing what we can. But just keep track of your student stuff and think to yourself, OK, where is my student's information? What am I collecting? What am I doing with this? And then where is it being kept? And then finally, the output, who has access to this? Is this something that only I have access to? Well, that's that's pretty safe because that's part of what's there. But do I have other information? Like is there is there a, a special education teacher or something else? I have a student on an IEP that I'm connected with somebody else. How am I connecting with these other people to do that? And am I then being a little more careful about what I'm sharing than I am in person? Um, if you're communicating via social media, especially with a, with a student or with a teacher, remember that the same kind of guidelines apply in the classroom. You know, when you're in the classroom, you say, OK, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm not alone with the student, you know, just because that would only make sense. 
And yet now there are times where even after hours or because school is now sort of a 24 hour thing, I'm talking to a student one on one. Well, do the parents know? Is there something? Do I have some some safeguards set up in place so that I'm not just going to you know have some communication where some misunderstanding or something could come up? or even the appearance of a misunderstanding or something like that, you know? So just use the same guidelines that you have in the classroom this whole time, but extend it out and just be proactive in, in your thinking about, it. well, what do I do? Who's got this information? What can I share it? If I am sharing information about a student, how am I doing that? Am I just hopping on some kind of call that somebody else could be on or something? You know, is this a private conversation that I'm having? We need to actually talk about the data, what, you know, we need to make sure that this is this is safe, this is secure, this doesn't go any further than just us. Have those conversations instead of just assuming, well, I'm assuming this other person knows that we shouldn't share this about this. And then as you're having these groups there, just be aware of what you're sharing with your classes too about other students. It's the same thing in your classroom, like when you're doing that. You want to make sure that students aren't getting more information about somebody else, you know, or sharing something about somebody that you normally wouldn't share in the classroom, but now you're not thinking about it because you're sort of remote, you're you're a little more distance, you don't have that personal touch that's going on there. So, so you know, be aware of what you're sharing, you know, and then realize that you're the one responsible for that. So, okay, where's what I'm doing? Um, we have the video conferencing apps. We also have the apps that students are getting into. So now I'm having them go into something to maybe do, you know, we're, we're doing IXL at school or whatever. So my students are going in. Same things apply to that kind of data. Just because they're remote doesn't mean that the access is any different or that you should treat it any differently than you did when they were in school accessing things. I would recommend too that if your school has apps already vetted, use those first before you try and go out and find something on, on your own to do that. But we're doing what we can to make this work. Okay, so, so here's my question, right? Like, I know teachers have a lot of enthusiasm for the ways in which they're using tools and the ways in which they're connecting with their kids. And, you know, so I see like the screenshot of all of the kids faces from the Zoom. And, you know, how do you balance I don't know. I mean, is this one of my questions? I don't think so. Maybe it is. Oh yeah, I, that's exactly my next question. This is perfect. Um, how do you balance like the desire to support your teachers in being creative, in connecting with their, in, like being open and transparent and showing these things to your, you know, to the world in these really creative and fun ways and celebrating while at the same time oh my gosh, you guys, you guys can't share all this student data. You can't share all those faces. Oh my God, you don't have permission to do all this, right? Like if I'm a site administrator and I see these teachers doing things, how do I make sure that I'm having my teachers balance that, you know, enthusiasm, creativity, awesome engagement with like privacy concerns? Great question, Sue. And this is exactly the same thing that happened when all of a sudden Twitter blew up and they said, oh wait, we got to have a Twitter, a Twitter account for our school post things from our school because these success stories are going out. And when it first started, teachers were just going in, take pictures of the classroom, and they said, look what my class is doing and how cool this is, and that, without thinking about faces, particular things like that. And, doing, and it's the same thing with the Zoom thing. Absolutely, you want to encourage your teachers. And as a teacher, you want to be excited about doing this. But the same things apply. Remember, you don't want to put some kid's face out there, and you're the one responsible now for whatever kind of weird situation is out there where an ex-spouse or something sees the, you know, that kind of thing. So, so just be careful. When you do it. Absolutely be excited. You know, have the kids be excited and do those kind of things, but make sure that you temper it with, okay, wait a minute. Think, pause before I actually share something out here. Is this something that is, is there something that recognizable? Are there things that are good? And how can I recognize these kids and give them credit without exposing them to something else? Um, same thing for teacher-to-teacher -teacher interaction. We had an instance here where the teacher posted something, and this, <laughs> sorry, it's a true story. Teacher posted something, said, we finally found a way, uh, we finally found a way to virtually get together and drink. And this was, this was teachers doing this. They said, well, we did it via Zoom, and we had our drink, and they actually posted a picture of the whole, all the teachers on Zoom holding their drinks up and posted that out. That, that's not the message that we want to get out. The message we want to get out is our teachers are still able to interact and interact with each other, but you don't need to post a picture of every teacher hoisting their, their beverage of choice out on the internet for everybody to see. So enthusiasm, yes, but make sure that it's tempered with, okay, I want to also be careful as I'm doing this. 
And when something good happens in your classroom, promote that. Say, hey, look at this special thing that I did in my classroom. Just don't say, well, John, Sally did this kind of thing. You're going to say, my students did this, put them out. You can even have pictures of them working on things. Just make sure their faces aren't, aren't clear. And, you know, you, you can do that. Or you could even, you know, blur out or do any kind of thing that you want to do that. So be excited, post those out, but just make sure that you're being careful. It, same thing. It, I mean, it's just the progression that's been going on. But we've had we've had the same concerns, and we still have the same concerns on social media, of personal life, professional life. As a teacher, that is so blurred now because a lot of teachers have been fired for personal things that they put on social media. Whether they should have been fired for that or not is a question for the lawyers and everybody else. But why why take the chance? You know, you know, just just make sure like you're only sharing with the right people. And when you're sharing things, you're you're sharing information that that you'd be OK with with everybody out there. I think the you know grandmother over your shoulder thing is a very good guide for teachers and students alike as you're posting things. Yeah, I, and I think a lot of what you just said related to social media is in that link that Michael just posted, you know, with the stu you know do's and don'ts of student privacy on social media. Like we talk a lot about what is PII and how do you prevent it when it comes to sharing, you know, student work or student images or any of that. Um, granted, that was made when we were all in classrooms, right? But I still, exact same things apply. So I think that's, that's all really good advice. Um, you know, I, I was going to say that we we put all of the links that um, that you have already shared or that, you know, that we put compiled here. Right. And I'm going to um, I'm going to take a moment and I'm just going to share out this um, this PowerPoint, not to PowerPoint, these Google slides here and show you what it is that that Steve and I have compiled. And um, just so you all have all these links in case you need them. Um, these are um, all of the, the ideas that, that Steve talked about today. Um, if there's one big takeaway when it comes to thinking about your classroom, you know, and remote learning, and what is this, you know, what does this time mean for us, and how does it play around it with our privacy? Um, Steve, do you, uh, like, did I capture your takeaway um, properly here in thinking about the fact that, you know, this is your classroom? You're in control, right? You need to know your tools. The policies that we used in our classroom are still the same policies that apply here with our tools. We need to be very mindful of what's going on in our backgrounds, on our social media. We need to be very mindful of that line between your personal life and your professional life. Um, for those of you who want these slides, they're all up here at this tiny URL. We can also put that in the chat. Oops. And then, um, sorry, I'm gonna back up. There you go. So they're all up here in this tiny URL. Um, and so all you'll have the ability to click on any of the links that were posted today in that chat um, or any of these tools that we shared. And, um, and then I also have put in that slideshow um, our contact information. So this is myself and Steve. And then we also have a bunch of chats that are going on at Common Sense right now related to distance learning um, that we do twice a week. Um, and so there's a whole, you know, I saw Nancy Nelson in the chat. She's in one of these and um, a bunch of teachers and educators and administrators from all across the country um, who are talking about everything from special education and social emotional learning and all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to put in a plug for that. But yeah, I, I think uh, that was my my big takeaway. Is there anything else that that you want to add here when it comes to what do we need to be mindful of? I, I think that was a great overview, Sue. And I think, you know, privacy is a, a really deep, big subject. Take advantage of the resources that are out there, obviously. Main thing I would say, though, is don't panic. You know, be calm. Realize that teaching is always the same way it's been. The privacy concern is a lot like when the lawyer comes into the school and talks about whatever they're talking about, and then you get freaked out about that or somebody else will come in. I mean, as educators, we do the very best we can to take care of these kids. That hasn't changed, never will. So use your own best judgment, you know, as you're going out there, use the resources that are there, but don't panic. You know, this was sort of an emergency remote learning thing. Going into next year, there'll be a little more scrutiny, but that's why you have the summer to sort of get yourself ready for, okay, this is my new classroom. How can I make it my classroom? Remember when you first, that first year teaching, I mean, my desk, seriously, my desk was cleared out. There's no way I'm coming back for year two. This is like going to that first year teaching. You know, you're trying to teach like your co-op did when your student taught, and it doesn't work because you're not your co-op. It's your own thing. So on this medium, you have to figure out what works for you. 
as you're starting this and you realize, wow, I just talked for 50 minutes and that that was boring. If I had sat there, I would not have been able to do it. So how can I break this up, have my kids work in groups using these new tools? So figure these out to make the experience good for you and your students. The good news is the kids are going to be so excited to get back to anything, whatever this mode is, because they're going crazy, just like you're going crazy. They're missing you as much as you're missing them. And I think this will this will have a new appreciation for teachers. Parents are now, I see those things. Teachers need raises. Come get my kids. I can't do this. You know, so so I think this is sort of making the appreciation for teachers and what they're doing uh, much, much higher. And I, I think that's a really good place to be. And then we just need to figure out, OK, how can we leverage this, change the mode while still keeping, you know, the things your teacher training is still you and you still need to be you. But it's going to be fine. It's going to absolutely be fine. Well, I always appreciate your positivity because I think privacy does not get enough positivity. I think it gets a lot of doom and gloom and scariness and you're going to get sued and we're, you're never going to work again, right? And so I love this message. I love talking to you about these things. And um, if anybody else has any questions for Steve, um, if you have any other concerns, if you want you know, those resources or you want to learn more, um, you know, we have posted a lot of this information, you know, in that tiny URL, but by all means, feel free to contact either of us at any point, And, um, we're happy to help you out as much as we can. Exactly. Hey, hey Sue. Yeah. Sue and Steve, uh, lots of really good conversation, especially in the chat, lots of thumbs up. Um, I think that, um, what you are talking about with us today is, is very poignant and meaningful. Um, on behalf of NCCE and all of our um, participants out there, all of our viewers and listeners, I want to thank Sue Thoughts and Steve Garten with Common Sense Education. Um, thank you for being here and sharing your expertise on the privacy concerns that we should all, not only our, us as teachers and educators, but also for our students should be thinking about as we navigate this online learning and teaching you know something that we've been sort of thrown into right i mean for some of us you know steve was talking about for some of us teachers it's been an easy transition and for others it's been um it's been a challenge so thank you for being here and thank you for talking us through some of those privacy concerns and what we can do about those uh, to protect um, ourselves as teachers and our students so thank you you're welcome it's been a pleasure thanks for having us <laughs>